So you went home from the hospital after your surgery and then shortly after that you met again in the office with Dr. Plimak and her team. Correct. And uh, how soon after did you start the chemo? Um, surgery was in August, I believe I started chemo end of September, perhaps? Yeah, yeah end of September. Somewhere, somewhere in there, yeah. So, yeah. And, uh, and tell us how that went. See, I thought it went very well. <laughs> I did. He always thinks it went very I did. well. <laughs> I, everything I go through, I think, is not a big issue. It's not a big problem. Did you get a lot of side effects initially from the chemotherapy? Uh, after the first treatment, I don't, I don't think I did. I don't now, think she, so. She refreshed no, my memory about how it actually was. And, um, but no, after the first treatment, it, it, you know, I'm like, oh, is this is chemotherapy. It this wasn't terrible bad. after the first treatment. <laughs> is there anything that makes patients more likely to have? worsening side effects than others, that you can sort of preempt somebody who's going to tolerate the treatment less even before you start treatment? Yes and no. Um, we actually studied this and found that older patients have a harder time in terms of fatigue, but real serious problems that land you in the hospital or cause long-term issues are rare for all patients. So it's just a matter of getting through the discomfort, the fatigue. Um, in some cases, nausea, we give very good medicines to prevent mm -hmm. nausea, but some patients like Michael, I think you need a little extra a little at extra. home to help with that. And then once we get the right sort of mixture of drugs, both preventative and treatment related for nausea, most patients do really well with it and are able to kind of lay low through the treatment. I'm sure you were more fatigued than usual, not quite as active as usual, but pretty quickly afterwards back to your normal. And, and before routine. starting the treatment, obviously with the surgery, you've got much more extensive information from pathology. Uh, did you need to get some scans done before surgery? So we didn't Sorry, do, before chemo. We didn't do scans before chemotherapy because we had all the information we needed pretty fresh from the surgery and all the tests that were done before surgery. After chemotherapy is when we started the every three month scan routine. Mm -hmm. And so that was to, for surveillance. Mm -hmm. And Michael going through all this chemo, he was saying a few moments ago, most important thing was to be an active participant in terms of getting the information. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's not what he was saying, was it? <laughs> <laughs> saying that in hindsight. You, you know, I, I think I can't stress it enough, the, the fact that you have somebody there to... Um, to look after you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I couldn't imagine going through what I went through without having yeah. any support system. Seriously, like if I he had was alone, I couldn't imagine doing that. Um, yeah, I had I had plenty. My wife and and other people who constantly looked in on me. Um, but boy, did I run the gamut from oh, this is chemotherapy. Oh, this ain't bad. What did I make a big deal out of? And I only had three treatments. That third treatment. Um, the anxiety just to go get that third treatment because of how I was, uh, mm -hmm. you know, after my second treatment. So the second treatment really knocked it you It knocked up. me, yeah, it knocked mm -hmm. me for a loop. It was, mm -hmm. uh, I was surprised actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, just, just a terrible way you feel. When you get a patient that's suffering so much from the side effects, is that the point that you might think about reducing the dose of chemo or potentially even saying, look, the side effects of treatment right. are more bothersome than the disease we're trying to treat here. Yeah, so we always do that calculation in the clinic. In Michael's case, there was no question we were gonna push forward. Um, he was up for it as hard as it was for him with cycles two and three. Uh, we knew there was an end to it, and so we felt we could get him through it. And again, at that time, our goal was cure. And yeah. so to get to that goal, I think people are really quite motivated. We don't change dosing unless there's a medical reason to do it, such as kidney function. Sometimes we'll delay, but we usually don't reduce in this particular setting. Now, unless my wife squealed on me, I didn't give up the fact that I was having such a difficult time with it. You know, I still, I still played the, the strong role. You did. You did. But, uh, and what was the hardest side effect to deal with? It was this, the nausea and the you had, do we actually vomiting with the yeah, chemotherapy? Yeah, you know, everything. There were so many things that, that changed in my body. The, uh, there was nausea, and you think, well, you know, you go throw up and you lay down and you'll be fine. But it was a, a, such a short cycle of throw up for 15 minutes, be well for 15 minutes, throw up for 15 minutes, be well for 15 minutes. It wasn't, you know, uh, a longer period of time mm -hmm. where that, I would be sick and then I would get a couple hours of normalcy. It was, the frequency was, and it really took a lot out of you. 
So from what we're hearing, that obviously these chemotherapy agents can have huge value at controlling the disease, but dealing with the side effects with the right management with the team that you have working with you yeah. side effects can actually be managed pretty well now for a lot of patients with the new anti-sickness medications mm -hmm. that is true yeah. might well, have a tougher time than most of our patients with nausea in particular yeah. um, but we have you know, we had to sort of layer on additional treatments for it i think we right. gave him some iv fluids in the clinic when he wasn't drinking all that much. So I think, you know, Michael, you had it the worst of many <laughs> and you still pushed through and he you did, still got through did. it. Yeah, I mean, um, overall it wasn't that bad. Yeah, we, we actually had to set up a whiteboard in front of the TV where he planted himself all the time anyway to, um, you know, tell him what time to take each medicine and then yeah. set your watch, set yeah. a clock, because you have to remember to watch that. And, and, and so Sandy you don't get was really sicker. key, I think, in supporting through the side effects because oh. when you came in, you were you know, again, unable to absorb information and strategy. Yeah. You were there with your notebook keeping oh my track. Gosh. Uh, yeah. Okay, when do we give what when? And mm -hmm. I think that's where the mm -hmm. caregiver role is so critical um, in helping us to help you with side effects. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, just uh, wrapping up this segment, sure. would, are there any uh, areas that you would like to bring up for other patients that may be watching this segment about if their doctors are not giving them the information they need? Do you, do you think there's certain uh, organizations that you've looked at since with bladder cancer patients that have sh have you been involved in any support groups or anything like that? Or, or I, have, that? I haven't after the fact, but I plan on doing more or getting involved more. Again, like I said, I couldn't imagine going through this myself. And so I, I did have good support. And for people who don't have that support is where I think the community needs to come together. Right. The community being uh, people like myself who's gone through, the, mm -hmm. gone through it. And then how soon after the chemotherapy do you start looking for the response? How soon would you scan somebody? And how soon do you say, well, look, you know, this treatment's really not doing what we'd hoped versus, oh, it may be earlier, too early to say, let's push on with further treatment and see how the cancer responds. Right, so that's a question that's easily answered, I think, in the metastatic setting where we actually are watching tumors grow and shrink in response to our treatment. This particular setting with chemotherapy was the adjuvant setting where there wasn't any tumor visible on your scan uh, and so we were just treating hoping we were cleaning up everything microscopic and everything we couldn't see so in that setting it's just routine for us to do imaging every three months to just kind of see if anything comes back and that's really how we know whether we've succeeded or not if at the end of two years all the scans are clean we breathe a little sigh of relief that the chance of recurrence is low mm -hmm. um, but oftentimes we do find cancer recurrent on those scans and then we move into the yet the next phase of treatment um, and there there are nuances in terms of figuring out whether it's working or not along the way and one final question we've heard about obviously the nausea the vomiting uh, that goes with uh, chemo but we know that chemo for the, certainly for the short term can actually suppress your immune system. Mm -hmm. Do you have any concerns about patients being exposed to maybe grandchildren or children sure, who may sure. have coughs or colds or yeah. in the flu season? Uh, are we concerned about what our cancer patients may pick up if they're immunosuppressed? Mm -hmm. What advice do you give to patients about sure. that? Sure, we get those questions a lot. Um, our advice is to keep living your normal daily life, just be a little bit of a germaphobe. Mm -hmm. Purell is your friend, don't hang out with someone who's right. obviously ill. And part of why we can be flexible with these recommendations is we use as part of the chemotherapy, Michael, that you got a growth factor support. So it's a injection after chemotherapy that boosts the neutrophils or the infection fighting white cells. And so by keeping your immune system robust during treatment, we really have reduced the incidence of bad infections that can come with chemotherapy. So those fortunately now are very rare. Nonetheless, if you get the flu while you're on chemo, that's not good for anybody, uh, even if it's not going to be catastrophic to your health. And so, you know, we urge more common sense and hand washing. <laughs>